Is, is this on? Okay, wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If I could ask everybody in the room to come around the table, that would be amazing because as you can see, we are a very small group being the first session of the day, I believe. Um, so uh, thanks so much to everybody for, for joining today. The session is safeguarding a trustworthy global information ecosystem. Um, and in this session, we are gonna focus on the work of the task force on trustworthy information online and the launching of a set of principles by that task force. Um, we hope it's gonna be an interactive session. I think we're such a small group and a number of us are very deeply involved in this work that I think it could actually be a strategy session um, for, for the task force, um, for the work going ahead and for the principles. Um, so maybe to start with, I could just give some context to, to the task force and then we'll move into opening remarks and, and dig into discussion. So the Task Force on Trustworthy Information Online is a multi-stakeholder task force that has recently been launched in the Freedom Online Coalition. Um, the task force is continuing the work of the Action Coalition on Trustworthy Information Online that was established by the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Wikimedia Witness, Global Voices, and Salesforce under the uh, Tech for Democracy initiative by the, the Danish government. Uh, while in the FOC, the task force is going to be chaired by the government of Denmark and the Wikimedia Foundation. And the Action Coalition's intention was to identify solutions to support trustworthy information online. And the objective of this task force will be to carry forward that work and propose policy recommendations for governmental institutions and lawmakers with the goal of safeguarding a healthy online information ecosystem. So that's very broadly ta the task force. And then later in the session, we're going to get into the principles that have been proposed and the work of the task force. But to start with, uh, first we'll have opening remarks from Allison Peters, the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Bureau of Democracy and Labor in the US State Department. Allison. Well, good morning to a uh, bunch of very familiar faces and friends, um, and a sincere thank you in particular to our colleagues in the Danish government for uh, their leadership in establishing the Freedom Online Coalition's newest task force on trustworthy information online, um, and also to our fellow FOC Advisory Network members, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation for taking on the role of co-chair alongside uh, the Danish government. As the chair of the FOC, we in the United States are proud of our partnership uh, with both the government of Denmark and all FOC members, as well as the advisory network um, to advance human rights online and an open internet that is interoperable, secure, and reliable for all. Digital media and information literacy empowers people to freely express themselves and arms individuals with the knowledge and skills to communicate and critically evaluate information. The United States is promoting trustworthy information online by bolstering our support for initiatives to address disinformation globally, from fact-checking initiatives to media literacy, while at the same time, we seek to also bolster an independent media globally. We're promoting and protecting open and resilient information ecosystems by addressing critical needs for at-risk journalists, fostering the long-term sustainability of independent media outlets, enhancing the impact of investigated journalism, and bolstering outlets' resilience to legal and regulatory challenges, including through our journalism protection platform. And I'll note here, we're very proud members, as is the government of Netherlands, as our uh, chair, um, and the government of Denmark uh, of the Freedom Online Coalition, and we are going to continue to work through that global platform with our partners and allies to advance these efforts. I will note for this conversation, and I think for the broader community here at IGF, that we really have to continue to be mindful that our approaches to promoting trustworthy information online, including our efforts to counter disinformation, do not inadvertently undermine the bedrock principles that undergird democracies, particularly fundamental freedoms, freedom of expression, both online and offline. 
We've seen how governments around the globe continue to claim for themselves very broad powers to ban certain forms of expression all too often, uh, misusing that power to repress peaceful dissent and silence the voices of independent media, civil society activists, human rights defenders, dissidents, members of uh, religious, ethnic, racial, and other minority groups around the globe. That's why platforms like IGF are so critical for us to continue to bring stakeholders together to address these threats and challenges and strengthen our resolve to tackle them. So again, I just really wanna thank uh, you all for being here bright and early for what is a really critical conversation. This is just the start of the conversation, not the end uh, in our work in the Freedom Online Coalition. And we look forward to an exciting year and years ahead for this task force. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks so much, Allison, and it's great to hear um, the number of approaches the U.S. government is taking to foster trustworthy information ecosystems, um, and I think that really underscores the importance of taking a multi-pronged approach uh, to this. And so, so maybe to just start the session, uh, first I wanted to introduce our other panelists. We have Jan Gerlach, the Director of Public Policy from Wikimedia. Ivan Siegel, the Executive Director of Global Voices, and Clara Christensen, the Head of Section, Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, they all fill different seats, company, private sector, civil society, and government, uh, which I think is great because it's important that we bring different perspectives to this conversation. And maybe to start with, it would be wonderful to hear from each of our panelists about what do you see as the key challenges to fostering an you know, a trustworthy information space, and how can the work of the task force help address these challenges? And maybe we can just go down the line, <laughs> starting with um, Jan. Yeah, hi, um, everybody, I guess. Um, key challenges is, is what you ask for. Um, yeah, so my name is Jan. I'm at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, we are the nonprofit that um, hosts and operates uh, Wikipedia and supports a global um, set of communities that build Wikipedia and other uh, free knowledge projects. And from our perspective, key challenges right now are, I think, a, a trend towards um, consolidation of power over speech online um, that is actually driven by lots of governments that um, seek to promote freedom of expression um, and um, we're seeing regulation that um, unfortunately pushes the powers um, to make decisions about what content should be online and um, what is and isn't trustworthy on two platforms whereas uh, this knowledge is really held by uh, communities around the world and uh, if we prevent people from participating um, we're really not doing ourselves a favor um, i i wrote down a few um, notes this morning and I was really thinking, you know, when you when you prevent half the world from participating in knowledge spaces, this is actually just also a matter of peace and security to make it really a drastic um, um, statement here. Um, when, when half the world is prevented from joining conversations and um, deciding what is and isn't trustworthy, then um, that void will be filled with misinformation. And I think that's a humongous challenge for all of us, um, especially in the age of generative AI that is powered uh, by knowledge that is out there on the internet. And when half of that knowledge is not true, is not verifiable, is not trustworthy, then we all have a big problem. And I think that's sort of the challenge that we're looking at right now. Yeah, thanks for that. And I think that echoes a lot of what Allison um, was saying as well in terms of uh, governments asserting power and control over access um, to the information, access to different types of information. I think you also see this from a you, commercial perspective as well in terms of what how companies are curating the information that we, we have access to. Um, Ivan, it would be wonderful to hear from you. You do uh, citizen-related journalism. Um, from your perspective, what do you see as the challenges? Good morning, everyone. I'm Ivan Sigel. Is this on? I'm Ivan Sigel. I'm the executive director of Global Voices. Uh, Global Voices is a large community of writers, translators, and digital activists, mostly based and focusing on global majority communities around the world. 
and we are coming up on our 20th anniversary this year. So we've been practicing uh, the art of identifying and finding accurate and trustworthy information in online spaces, but with a particular attention to equity and diversity of voices and languages, asking whose knowledge, asking whose perspectives matter, and who do we hear, and how, do, how are individuals represented, how do they represent themselves in online spaces um, for a very long time now. And interestingly, the basics haven't changed that much. Um, the core question still is, I think, for uh, a trustworthy information online space is you have to have a open, interoperable um, network that has something like a common carrier system, and you have to have user agency. That's the first step. And then the second is uh, the healthy, and across society, a healthy promotion of a wide range of participation because a dominant a mode of expression or a dominant way of thinking about the internet is that it's frictionless, it's easy, it's, and that openness equates to somehow the availability for everybody to do anything in online spaces. But when you actually think about the internet in the context of history, you realize that um, historical facts and friction and participation and access has always been inequitable. And it's always been um, the effort to kind of find a to build spaces where people can participate more or less equally is actually a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time to create spaces where people can come together and talk in an equitable way. And that's a lot of what we do. Um, and I think that that kind of promotion of voice and vo promotion of expression requires uh, thinking carefully and critically about how institutions are built, institutions of knowledge are built about how, not just about freedom of expression, freedom of media, but also about whose media. So thinking about carefully about the diversity of those sources, about how they're funded, how they're sustained, and so on and so forth. So I think a lot of the comments we've heard thus far, I agree with everything said um, from Jan and from Allison. So I'll stop there for the moment and just continue. Yeah, thanks, Evan. And I think that's um, a really important point that the internet creates a number of opportunities to create equal spaces, um, but we have to have the intention when we actually build those spaces and use them to, to have them be equal. Um, Clara, maybe from your perspective, as, as a government, what are the challenges to a trustworthy and safe information environment? Thank you so much. Now, yes, you can hear me, great. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for showing up. My name is Clara Christensen, and I'm part of the Tech Ambassadors team at the Danish uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and I'm pretty new to the whole tech agenda. I just started this August, so I'm really excited to be here and be part of this uh, discussion. And first and foremost, I want to thank uh, our friends and colleagues in the Freedom Online Coalition, and especially the, the chairship of the US, and how you sort of carried this task force task force forward. I think this is really exciting for us to see from, from the Danish perspective. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today because I think that online information is shaping our world and our realities. And that's why we need to build healthy online information systems. Um, and while, as we've heard, you know, this is sort of an opportunity to give voice to marginalized groups to, to people who normally wouldn't have a chance to participate, then definitely the sort of uh, online forum also can distort information and sort of uh, make it harder to navigate what kind of information is trustworthy, what is not. And this is why we need to build reliable information structures in partnership with civil society, with private sector. And I think this is sort of uh, one of the Danish um, key values that we need to build these things in partnership. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy to to be part of this task force together with Witness, Global Voices, Wikimedia, Salesforce, and Freedom Online Coalition. I think this is like it's going to be a great discussion, um, and happy to see this sort of growing out uh, of the Tech for Democracy initiative that we launched two years back. Um, happy to see it grow. This is exciting. Um, and I think sort of as a government, um, we do have a responsibility to try to build human rights based, um, ecosystems of information. And that also means regulation. 
Um, and I think definitely there is a tension between sort of, as we talked about, you know, some governments maybe wanting to take a lot of control over these online spaces uh, in a way that might not be very conducive to sort of um, a free debate and active engagement. And on the, on the other hand, sort of also the government taking a role in to sort of, um, yeah, trying to, to provide like some sound uh, regulation. Um, and we have to do that in partnership with the private sector, with civil society, with our community to try to make sort of regulation that that works, that actually matter, um, and that can provide sort of trustworthy information. So I think this is going to be exciting, sort of talking a little bit about how do we do that, and, and how do we actually engage with, you know, the communities to sort of uh, make sure that we do this in the right way. Um, yeah, and I think sort of, I'm so happy to see this principle being launched today. I think this is really a, a good foundation and I'm happy to talk about how we put them into action and how we actually sort of build on these principles to um, to try to have um, more trustworthy information online. I think that's, that's it for me. Yeah, thanks, Clara. Um, <clears throat> and so as, as you said, uh, the first part of the work of the task force is really the launch of these principles. Um, it's a core set of principles to guide the work that it will be doing. There are three principles. I think everyone's got the paper in front of them. Meaningful multi-stakeholder engagement, uh, protect and promote international human rights standards, and a diverse, trustworthy, and equitable internet. Um, and since we have a very small group, many who are already familiar with this work, maybe we can spend some time just really digging into these principles. But first, I don't know, um, Jan or Ivan, if you want to talk a little bit about the background, uh, what went into developing them, some of the thinking behind these principles, uh, since you were connected to the coalition as well. Yeah, sure, I'll happily do that. Um, <clears throat> so, Something that really attracted me to this particular group is that on the nonprofit side, we have Wikipedia, uh, Global Voices, and Witness, three organizations that I think have an unusual perspective on um, what it takes to actually build trustworthy online spaces and trustworthy online information because they have started from an open knowledge perspective and from working with communities that are not that's necessarily um, for for whom being online is not necessarily an equal an even an an easy thing, especially in the context of say uh, witnesses' work and some of global voices' work. Um, but that that kind of idea of a citizen generated participatory internet is the core of a, a somewhat now almost naive and older idea that has since been commercialized and uh, is now sits broadly across all societies as opposed to building communities with intention. And the, these three groups are all are communities built with intention. Um, so working with, with them is, to me, as a really great place to assert or reassert a set of values as to what it actually takes to try to build, to build trustworthy information spaces and, and open knowledge. And so I'm super happy that we're doing it in this way. Yeah, and I think to add to that, um, Ivan actually alluded to it, it's it's not a given that people can contribute to these spaces, right, and can tell the stories from the world around them, from their communities. Um, I want to emphasize that also adding knowledge to Wikipedia is not a trivial task in many places in the world, and not just because connectivity is a problem, but actually it might be dangerous to just document the places that you inhibit um, in in places where freedom of expression is not upheld or where governments are actively trying to um, suppress certain information about um, how their countries run, right? Um, and that is why, again, it is very, very important that these groups come together, organizations like ours, to, to share also best practices, to share, um, I think, strategic thinking and, and why these spaces here are really important for us to come together. and. Um, why I think also the engagement of governments um, is is just so welcome, right? Who who need to understand how their actions in say North America, in Europe, in the global North, how their regulation actually affects people 
elsewhere too and um, enables them or empowers them um, to, to participate or in the worst case actually prevents them from doing so and um, that's why I think um, we've um, happily joined this task force uh, because this is a great forum to um, raise these issues. Um, thank you for that. And so, I mean, there's there's three principles. The meaningful multi-stakeholder engagement, which is focusing on, I think, a lot of what you were saying, Ivan, about the importance of having different stakeholders um, come to the table um, to, to inform the design, development, deployment, evaluation of technologies. I think it's interesting that this has standards and protocols relevant to the information ecosystem, uh, which gives an important nod to the technical community um, <clears throat> and working together to protect human rights and democracy in the front lines, then protect and promote international human rights standards, so ensuring that regulation uh, is in line with international human rights standards, strengthening privacy and data protection regimes across the world, um, and a diverse, trustworthy, and equitable internet, prioritizing free, open, transparent, interoperable, reliable, safe and secure internet. Um, and so I, I guess my first question is, are there any reactions to these principles as they sit right now? My understanding is that the task force will actually be fleshing them out quite a bit more. Um, so first question to everybody in the room is, are the reactions to these principles? Um, do they seem on, on target? Um. <laughs> I'll just say really quickly, it's a really interesting moment to try to do this because as you said, and several speakers have said already, uh, many governments are thinking about how to regulate the internet much more actively now, and not just regulation from a, a repression standpoint, though that is certainly happening, but we also see lots and lots of attempts from Global North countries trying to think about how to regulate, especially the platforms and the big tech companies in ways that are potentially really complicated and difficult for um, small, medium-sized uh, citizen-driven initiatives or nonprofit initiatives or uh, pay potentially rebound in ways that are make it impossible or extremely expensive to create new kinds of platforms that are civic in intent rather than commercial in intent. And uh, so, and at the same time, we have seen something like a break in trust around the large social media platforms. That's been true for years, but the last two or three years have been really intense in that regard, which is both a big challenge and also a huge opportunity for us to reset potentially or rethink ways around instantiating and supporting these kind of basic, uh, these communities that have a, a core set of civic values in their approach to, to online participation and the creation of community, the creation of knowledge, the creation of information. So when we think about these, these statements, I think that's where, that's where we've been coming from as a group. And so if you see you know, not that many of the previous set of principles that we've seen launched over the years have really emphasized this participatory, participatory side. And I think that's really important for us to kind of reestablish re that side of it as well as, uh, as well as the other part. So thanks. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think we are seeing a rise in platform regulation that can have either intentional or unintentional um, impacts on um, platforms, if it uh, doesn't really speak to the business model or the way that the platform functions or the services that are that, off that are offered, and can have um, unintentional consequences for the the rights of users. Um, and so, I I guess there's two approaches. I, when we were thinking that we would have a larger group, <laughs> we were. <laughs> We were thinking maybe we would go, we, each person would take a, take a principle and talk about it, talk about why it's important, what it might mean in practice, and how it could guide the work of fostering trustworthy information ecosystems online. Um, so we, we could do that, or we could talk about maybe a little bit more tangibly how the task force can apply these principles um, to the work that it is doing, what might be the priorities of the task force going forward. It would be great to have input of what others think the, the priorities of the task force should be as it, as it starts to work within the FOC. Um, so I don't, 
I don't know if there's a preference between those those two approaches. <laughs> yes, we are. This is fully interactive. So please, um, questions, yeah. comments. Send down a mic if maybe if it's. Uh, we can send this mic this way then. Thank you. Um, I was formerly at Global Voices, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm Keiko. Um, it is great to see the work of um, Wikimedia and Global Voices on the coalition working towards the trustworthy global information ecosystem. And I see the panel seem to sort of reify this approach to global ecosystem in terms of its diversity and inclusion, where many of us are present. And uh, I was wondering, because a lot of the disinformation and its harms are happening in the other areas outside of the uh, Western-centric approach. And I was wondering how you guys are going to sort of scaffold their way of, not many of them you know, are shifting from oral culture to digital cultures, and there are the, the impact of dis disinformation is not so much that is limited in the cyberspace, but there are coming to the lives of people that are in different languages, and that is why I think it's a very important in places like Global Voices and Me Wikimedia that has all these people that are contributing their time and efforts in other parts of the world. I better get your microphone back. No, 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 no I think no, no, no. it's yours to keep. Should we collect we, a few questions sure. first? Right. Yeah. yeah, are there other questions or comments input into um, perhaps challenges that you see in the information ecosystem that the task force could concentrate on? Go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm Nick Benequista. I'm from the Center for International Media Assistance at the National Endowment for Democracy. Um, look, the principles look fine. I'd say, if anything, they look a little innocuous. They're, they're, no one's going to disagree with these. <clears throat> and you know, I, we work on media development uh, as a kind of an approach to information integrity and have argued that you know, over the years, we need systems level, really you know, pretty ex major interventions if we're going to fix the problems that we have in the information inf ecosystem. So things that affect how <clears throat> eyeballs and money are, are, are being moved um, through the digital, you know, through the digital uh, ecosystem. So this includes things like Pluralis in, in Europe, you know, trying to really bring massive amounts of private capital to bear, trust initiatives that are trying to really change the economic incentives uh, for, uh, for quality information online. Um, and, and many, many others, and, and of course, you know, policy interventions like bargaining codes that could really transform. You know, it's imperfect, I know, but we're looking to all these options. Um, in that context, the sort of participatory, citizen-driven approach seems a little quaint. And I just, I mean, and just to be provocative, like, hasn't I mean, uh, Wikimedia and Wiki Wikipedia and Global Voices is incredible. You know, you've done incredible work over the years, but faced with these sort of systemic level challenges, how does your vision for a kind of a participatory approach still matter? Sure. Um, I think it matters um, more than ever, probably, and I guess I need to say that, but I, I do believe in it as well. Um, you're talking about sort of changing incentives, economic incentives around eyeballs. I, and you're probably alluding to um, supporting journalism. Um, and and um, I think Wikimedia can be sort of an honest broker in there, as in if stories go away, if stories, uh, if local journalism isn't funded, isn't sustainable, regional journalism, those stories cannot be on Wikipedia, right? Um, Wikipedia is not a place for original research, but every edit, um, every article refers to um, 
sources out there that are verified by the people who work on Wikipedia. And that's why we're, we have a, have a very strong interest in, in, the, in the media landscape being healthy and being diverse, right, for these stories to not just be sort of um, driven by engagement, as you, as you mentioned, but really um, documenting the world um, and, and being trustworthy. Um, and now every story that goes away, however, also goes behind a paywall is not accessible for many people around the world. We understand that um, journalism needs to be funded, uh, media work needs to be uh, sustainable, um, but we, we, we really have concerns about um, laws that basically just um, put put a larger price tag on 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 these on this knowledge, right? Per se, um, and so I think there's a role for governments to play there. There's a role for in, independent initiatives, um, but I think the the answer cannot be let's move um, money away from all platforms um, and make it harder for for nonprofit platforms even um, to 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 share and carry this uh, uh, knowledge. And move it to say big media conglomerates, right? And that's I think what we've been seeing around the world, how this has been happening, right? It's not independent journalism that ultimately benefits. It's not your person somewhere in a in in I think a conflict zone who ultimately benefits, but it's um, it's usually the big uh, media houses that we see sort of pushing this kind of regulation as well. And we're really worried about that. But we see ourselves sort of as a as an honest broker in the middle, right? We have. We, we know this must be accessible, but it must also be sustainable to actually work as in media, right? And that's, that's why this is, I think, a super important space for us to engage in, and, and we welcome uh, the question. Let me just add that both of these organizations are, are part of a process of field building, so it's not just about Global Voices and Wikipedia, it's about a whole universe of people who see it as their, um, see it as a civic act to create and share information that's trustworthy. And that is not only about media creation, that's, uh, it, it's also about knowledge building outside of the news. And uh, you know, that's what SEMA does, you focus really much, very much on the news and, and the professionalization of it. It's really important to say that you know, one of the reasons projects like ours got started is because of per pervasive uh, and complicated bias in news framing that's, that's a history of the news media from the last 50 years. I mean, it's not the case that um, news organizations are adequate or sufficient for all the kinds of information we need in the world. We do need a diversity of voices, a diversity of perspectives. And in many countries around the world, as you know, if you work in the media development field, it's been very, very hard to get that kind of diversity, even when there is a financial sustainability. Um, that's what, that's, and so, creating alternatives um, that allow people to have easy entry into, a, into an information space to be able to build their own systems, their own, their own communications platforms, their own communities, whatever initiative they might create that helps to add a diversity of perspectives and voices and more information coming from more places is a good thing. Um, it is not a zero sum system. And like, yes, Global Voices is small, but we've had about 8,000 people participate with us and we've had hundreds of media partners over the years and we work on a typical basis with about 50. So it's, you know, on an, any given time. So it's not, it's not by itself maybe as significant as you'd like it to be, but it is part of a larger way of thinking about how information works. And I think that kind of story is really important to maintain and sustain and, um, and grow. And there's no reason why it can't keep growing as long as there's a fundamental framework f to allow it to be true. And so that's why sometimes saying these, as you, as you acknowledge, sometimes very basic ideas, these very basic principles need to be restated. Because the alternative, which is that we build a regulatory process that's all about big technology versus um, large media outlets, which, is, which are basically competing for access to, for, to advertising dollars, takes the civics out of the equation. And so we're here to try to make sure that the civics stays part of the equation. I don't know if um, there was additional thoughts onto the, the comment that you made, which I understood um, kind of about the, the voices and multi-stakeholder voices and maybe power of voice as well. I mean, so I 
I could address that really briefly as well, which is just, yes, you're absolutely right, Kiko, about how disinformation does affect many communities and many in many languages. And I think it's very important to make a clear distinction between misinformation and disinformation as well, by the way. Misinformation, which is generally ignorance in another language, and disinformation, which is lying, which is intentional misleading and of, of, of peoples and groups. Um, we certainly see a lot of that. And thinking about how to buttress or support uh, better information in other languages, in a whole range of languages, is a big part of what we do. I know Wikipedia also does that. Um, you know, we have an initiative called Rising Voices, which works with indigenous and marginalized groups to help to identify uh, and languages to help to to build their own information sources and trustworthy information sources. And lots of others do have that kind of activity as well. And I think it's super important to keep putting an emphasis on on that type of project as a as as a to stand in opposition to free floating disinformation. Yeah, maybe. Is it on? No. Like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I think just um, like commenting on some of your thoughts on sort of like regulation, what's the role of, of regulation? And I think we need to sort of distinguish between the very large online platforms and sort of how we regulate them versus sort of the more like non for profit or smaller platforms and how to sort of like give access to like multiple voices and then also mm, recognizing that very large online platforms do have like a special responsibility for like what kind of content comes online and how do you access it. Um, and I think that has to be coupled with like, for example, funding from, from governments to support um, Global South, the global majority voices to like make sure that um, we try to create a more open space. And I think that's some of the things that, for example, the Danish government is also trying to do through partners, through like access now to international media support, some of these organizations that um, that we're partnering up with to try to sort of um, make this like a more open space where more voices can be heard because I definitely agree with you that this is something that we see as like a big challenge and and it's um, sometimes uh, sitting in like a, a government position up somewhere in Europe. It can be really hard and challenging to see where we have the blind spots that we have and where we are sort of restricting information and restricting the debate. Uh, so I think that's for us super important to sort of uh, partner up uh, with like with organizations like yours to sort of to engage in that in that conversation and to to get better. Um, then of course we have the whole sort of EU regulation, uh, like a lot of regulation coming out of the EU right now, which I think is, um, for me, like super exciting and interesting to see how the EU, because I mean, Denmark as like a small country, we don't do a lot of regulation ourselves on sort of um, very large online platforms, for example, um, and seeing how the EU is trying to build some regulation um, but without having a lot of big tech companies and a big like big online platforms and how I think the EU is sort of trying to um, yeah to build a, to to make some regulation that could be used worldwide but still sort of um, grappling a bit with how to do that um, in a way that um, where we still sort of take into consideration the different local contexts in uh, the global majority and sort of outside the EU and I think that's could be really interesting to also hear some perspectives on like how you see that, how we're doing that, if it could be be better, how we as a small like country like Denmark could sort of engage in that discussion also in the EU and, and what we should sort of bring to the table. I think that would be really interesting to hear from, from everyone here and yeah, also on the panel. Yeah, that would be great. Hi, uh, my name's Michael Karnikolas. I'm the executive director of the UCLA Institute for Technology, Law, and Policy. Um, these look really good. It, it strikes me that all three of these principles pose a challenge to traditional concentrations of power. Um, interoperability poses a challenge to large online platforms. Um, human rights standards restrict what governments might want to do. Uh, and, and, you know, 
multi-stakeholder engagement. You know, I'm academic slash civil society. Multi-stakeholder engagement is great for civil society because it gives them a seat at the table, but where it's meaningful, obviously, it restricts authority among uh, governments to just take the actions that they want to take and companies to take the action that they want to take. Um, so I guess my question is, is there, what's, have there been early responses from governments and industry? Um, is there a strategy for developing buy-in among um, the, the, the players whose power would be eroded by the adoption of these standards? Um, is, is that what we're doing now, is developing that strategy? Like what's, what's uh, uh, how do you make these actionable by generating um, will to move towards these by the people who it's not necessarily in their, in their immediate interests to do so? Hi, my name is Guus uh, van Zwolf from the Dutch government, Dutch MFA. Um, thank you for a, for, a, for a great presentation. Um, I mean, this is an issue that we're, I mean, we're very happy as, as an FOC country that this topic is being taken up. We think it's a very important topic. That's the reason also why last summer we presented together with Canada the Global Declaration on Information Integrity, which I think um, mimics a lot of these princi same principles, but maybe are a little bit more detailed. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, I mean, we're, we're this, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, my question is the following. Um, being part now part of the, uh, now we're doing this work within the Freedom Online Coalition, I mean, this is a topic that's also high on the UN agenda with the UN Code of Conduct, for example, which is part of our common agenda, and UNESCO has, has promoted their uh, Internet for Trust initiative. And my question would be, how are we going to operationalize or promote these principles in those pr in those fora? Because that will be, I think, one of the key challenges that, will, that, 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 that we see, which would also be, um, well, uh, which, which also provides a certain uh, rationale or pretext for other countries to, 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 to start re more, more regulating more the, 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 these, these fora that we're discussing. Or not, not, not these international fora, but the, like the, the, the social media companies, et cetera, et cetera. So my question would be is how, how we're going to operationalize these, these principles and how we're going to organize ourselves in order to also address those, th those international fora since we are, I mean, the FOC is by definition a diplomatic coalition. Yeah, thanks. Um, maybe just to, to summarize, because I think there's some a couple of different threads that have emerged. Um, one is a, a question of kind of what's next with these principles? Is there going to be buy-in? How are they going to be used? Um, my response to that right now is that um, the principles are meant to lay the foundation for the work of the task force, which has just been launched within the Freedom Online Coalition. And so the strategy around how these principles are going to be used is being built and developed. Um, and this is, this is the starting point to share that this is the foundation that the task force is going to be working off of. Um, another question, who's to what you were pointing to, was um, how are we going to coordinate with other initiatives that exist around information integrity, um, you know, trustworthy online ecosystems, et cetera? Um, how are we going to promote the work of the task force and the principles in key international forums, debates, processes that are happening at the international level? Um, also, I heard a number of, um, I guess, suggestions of what is needed to create a, a safe and trustworthy information ecosystem from taking a systems level approach to ensuring that it is participatory and citizen driven to ensuring that the regulation is human rights respecting and is tailored to the platform. Um, and also a number of challenges that individuals are facing at the local level uh, with respect to the impact of disinformation. So maybe those are the different threads, and I, I don't know if there's any responses from the panel to those um, or thoughts from other members in um, the audience that would like to build on some of those threads.
Well, I see the creation of the task force also, the launch of, of the principles today as sort of an invitation to, to help figure this out. I mean, I think we got to be honest here that there's no clear strate strategic path forward, right? There's, um, I think, and I guess this speaks actually to the challenge of having all these processes that are somewhat loosely related, but where the coordination and connection isn't always so clear. Um, and, and having such a task force that actually brings together governments and civil society and hopefully also um, really um, proactive um, private actors can help as that, I think, coordination group um, that maps these processes and coordinates how, how we all speak um, with one another and maybe with others that we need to bring along. Um, I, I think from a Wikipedia perspective, our team's main task is often to educate people about how Wikipedia actually works. Everybody uses it, but nobody really knows what's under the hood. And once we start um, educating policymakers and governments about that, they're like, oh, wow, this, I didn't know this, right? This is, this is something we should be protecting. And um, we're, I mean, we're, we're seeing this as an opportunity to actually do this in, in an FOC context to bring along uh, governments who have very uh, lofty diplomatic goals, but uh, we'd love to like sort of get them engaged on this and um, and through diplomatic briefings um, help them also understand like what's at stake elsewhere, right? It's it's one it's one way to say one thing to say yes, the EU is is regulating the online spaces and it's it's also just um, learning how to do this a little bit. Uh, but then showing the real um, effects that some of these regulations have in, in places um, where, where Wikipedians sit in the global south and, and, and are affected by this, are affected by maybe a, a mechanism that forces platforms to remove content um, or um, are affected by uh, laws to uh, re retain data. Um, and um, just sort of, I think, having this as a, as a focal point where these conversations happen, I think, is this, the strongest sort of um, proposition that the, this task force actually has. Reactions or, or thoughts? Um, we've got four minutes left. So. <laughs> Just make a final comment. Well, I want to say thank you. I thought your your point was very clear very, and very helpful. I mean, these all of these uh, these three points are in some ways a challenge to traditional stakeholder positions. And embedding that challenge within the framework of a intergovernmental group is itself um, a, a strategy, right? It is itself to say here's a way of talking about those and bringing these these communities that traditionally don't have a lot of power are traditionally dispersed and by the but because they're dispersed, it's very, very hard to organize around some kind of considered position. And then to, to present that in a framework in which it does, it does actually have a, is in dialogue with um, entities that have the potential at least to think about regulation, think about um, supporting positions. Um, look, this, this conversation has been going on for a very long time. You know, the, and attempts to build principles, attempts to build coalitions, this, you know, the Web We Want project was the Web Foundation was 12 years ago, 14 years ago. Um, now there's older projects as well that have a lot of the same kind of language. And they tend to disintegrate because um, there isn't a formal structure for maintaining and supporting them that has an engagement with any kind of regulatory process. I was just sitting here and doodling on the different domains of authority and knowledge where these, things, things, these issues take place, right? Speech, privacy antitrust, content moderation, four different um, domains of expertise that often have conflicting uh, goals, uh, conflicting ends towards what they would like to see as an ideal regulatory environment, an ideal solution for some of the problems we see. Even fundamentally, sometimes fundamentally, different understandings of what, of what the problem even is. And um, I think our basic goal here is to is to make sure that the voices of the communities that we work with are included in those conversations and not ignored, not um, not skipped over because we have less power potentially or less fewer resources or because we don't have a profit motive in in, in uh, that underlines our, our activities. Um, so I'll stop there um, and let you guys continue. I have 
Thank you. I think actually we've got uh, one, one question. Comment, uh, we have that I need an answer from you because I represent Sri Lanka, uh, Internet Governance uh, Initiative of Sri Lanka. So uh, at the moment there is a proposed bill regarding internet safety in Sri Lanka, uh, which is uh, uh, almost the first reading has done in the parliament, which is uh, mostly uh, discusses about the internet safety, but it uh, creates regulations to censorship, to uh, fragmented uh, internet. Uh, so, and also it harmful for the platforms, media and users as well. So uh, where these kind of issues comes, where you stand, how we reach to you, how we can do an action for us as a people where in the developing world. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, one for highlighting the upcoming bill in Sri Lanka, but also flagging kind of the concluding question of the panel, which is um, next steps, how can people stay connected to the work and, and get in touch? Um, so maybe <laughs> I will hand to Clara and then maybe um, Jan, if you could speak to the uh, next steps and, and how people can stay connected to the work of the task force. But before that, did you have any kind of concluding remarks or reactions to anything that's been said? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think I was, sorry. Um, I also just wanted to comment sort of on this uh, issue between sort of um, giving sovereignty or authority uh, when you sort of work in this multi-stakeholder approach. And I think, I, I do think that that is of course a challenge, um, but I also think that this is the only way to build like good, reliable regulation that actually gets implemented. If we don't have buy-in from the private sector, for example, it is super hard to to make sort of um, sound regulations that, that actually will have an impact. Uh, and I think that's why it's so important and something that we work, uh, work for from the Danish side to sort of like try to include more private sector engagement, more civil society engagement to actually make sure that when we do make regulation, then it it's it's well informed and we have some buy-in to actually make it work out in the real world. So I do think this is like a very good um, example of like why this is difficult, why it takes time, but also why this is sort of the only way we, we can do it. Because states and governments, they can do so much, but if we don't have sort of buy-in from, from the rest of the ecosystem, I think it's going to be really difficult to to like create more trustworthy information online because the internet is, is not only regulated by, by governments, right? It's like, um, it's it's so sort of uh, big and also lie beyond sort of the serenity of, uh, of the state. So I think that's something that um, uh, provides some, some challenges, but also some really great opportunities and forces us to go into deeper dialogue with, with some of our counterparts. And I do think that that's sort of um, some of the important work that we should sort of continue working on in this task force. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, and maybe on to the last question of what's next for the task force and how people can stay connected. Well, first of all, uh, we're excited to, to launch this today officially. And um, as a task force, I think uh, we hope to grow and find many more people who want to contribute. So that's one way uh, to, to stay connected and, and be part of um, this hopefully growing momentum. Um, we. We just connected on this actually, and and uh, I think uh, as co-chairs Wikimedia, we, we're interested in people following us. There's spaces for discussion, like mailing lists, uh, public policy mailing lists. Uh, I think one way to also uh, be part of this is actually to become a Wikipedian. Um, if you, I can do a shameless plug here, um, and 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 just understand this better, right? I think that's sort of my 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 whole point here. Like we. we we need people around the world to understand what is going on and and how um, these systems work, how the citizen journalism space works, how Wikipedia works, how how all these uh, civic spaces um, actually function. And and by joining them, um, you're making a huge contribution, right? And obviously, we don't want to make this all like individuals' responsibilities, right? And that's why there are organizations like ours as well. Um, but uh, staying connected through these very communities that we support um, is is one really meaningful way to actually help uh, 
um, because at the end of the day, we, we are just here to serve them, right? And by directly joining them, you're actually doing um, very helpful work. Um, so yeah, uh, be part of this and, and um, try to stay connected in that way. Yeah, thank you. Um, so with that, I think we are out of time. Thank you so much for everybody's participation and your inputs. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about the task force or even participating, um, please do talk to one of us up here. Thank you.